Hello friends, today we are turning a tablecloth into a dress. Why? Because it's Halloween and that's all the excuse I ever need for anything. I've already washed and ironed this tablecloth. It's a rectangle, so I'm actually going to keep the existing hem for the skirt. This means taking the middle section out so the final skirt will be a square. I'm measuring up the long side of the cloth, a little over half the length of the short side, on both ends. Then I can cut out this middle section, which I'll use to make the bodice, and seam the two end pieces together to make a perfect square. To make the pattern for the bodice, I'm using my 16th century kirtle pattern from the Tudor tailor as a base. I like how this bodice fits and I want a similar final shape, including using lacing to close. It's worth noting that I am a very unusual shape and both my kirtle pattern and the final bodice reflects that. Unless you also want a very flat compressed cylinder of a body, your bodice pattern is likely to look very different. I'm then going to use this pattern to cut out a front and a back from the patterned edges, plus a plain front and back from the middle to use as a lining. Again, my cavalier attitude to pattern weights is not a recommendation. I'm also going to cut two nice wide straps. Thank you. 
First of all, the straps will get sewn up and ironed flat with a seam in the middle of what will end up being the inside. Then the straps are pinned onto the bodice front and sandwiched between the outer and lining. The edge gets clipped and the corners graded so everything will turn out nicely. The back outer also gets sewn to the back lining, but without involving the straps. I'm going to do something a bit unusual with those. Then it's time to prepare the skirt by ironing the seam we made earlier and then cutting the waist. I'm treating this exactly like a circle skirt, except for the part where it is actually a square. I'm also unpicking the side seams on the skirt down a little way because I need an opening to get in and out. And I've lost my seam ripper, so this is my life now. Starting with the back, I'm pinning the waist edge of the skirt to the bodice front, leaving the lining free. It'll fold over the seam allowance and get sewn down by hand later, so all the raw edges are enclosed. The waist edge of the skirt just needs a little bit of a clip so it can match the bodice back without pulling. I of course forgot that the side seams on my kirtle pattern are not actually at the side, but are slightly towards the back, so my front bodice is longer than my back bodice. No problem, I can make the waist edge of the front of my skirt longer by taking a little bit more fabric off. This also makes the front fractionally shorter, but that also isn't really a problem, as the back of the circle skirt always looks slightly shorter because that's where your butt goes.
I did a quick try on to confirm that everything was where it should be. In particular, I wanted to be sure I had enough room to put the buttons and buttonholes for the straps. And I decided this fabric was a little loosely woven for structural details, so I cut two squares and four strips of black felt to reinforce the buttons and the eyelets that are going to go on the sides. The squares just get put inside the big envelope that is currently the back bodice, and then two flat buttons are sewn on through all the layers. I'll put matching buttonholes in the straps to attach them. This means I can make the length of the straps adjustable. The strips are tucked into each side of the front and back and pinned in place. I then sat down to watch Hocus Pocus 2 and sew a million eyelets by hand, because for some reason I still prefer doing eyelets by hand, and I keep insisting on every single thing I make having eyelets. I wanted to lace the sides with velvet ribbon, but the only black ribbon I could get was too thick, so I'm lacing up with cord and making two velvet bow brooches to go over the hips instead. Maybe I'll go back and change out the lacing later so I can have the lovely big velvet hip bows I'm imagining, but for now these guys will do. I'm really committed to recycling more and creating less waste in general, and part of that is making better use of my ridiculous Halloween decorations. I always go all in on spooky tat, and although I never throw it out, it's time this stuff started getting used for more than one twelfth of the year. Don't ask me why a happy Halloween dress has more widespread use than a tablecloth, okay? That's just how I roll. Anyway, don't you want to see how it's turned out? I hope you've enjoyed this video and part two of my recycled Halloween extravaganza. Don't forget to check out the previous video where I turned a second-hand mass-produced Halloween costume into something you might actually want to wear. If you're having a good time, you know the drill. Like and comment to make the YouTube gods happy. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this sort of thing. Follow me on Instagram for pictures of my cat. And many thanks to my Ko-fi supporters. I wouldn't be able to do this without you, and if you'd like to join their number and get content like this 24 hours before anyone else, check out the link in my description. Dream big, and I'll see you next time.